Hello, everyone. It's me again. Uh, I'm just presenting this on behalf of our team because the folks who are working really hard on this was also the one who worked really hard on open source tool to push the release for CVPR, so they didn't have time to do the presentation. I'm just helping the team to do the presentation. Okay, so the table of content, four things that we need to answer. What is our ARIA Digital Twin dataset? Why did we build it? How did we build it? And what is next? Uh, it's the same fly-through video that uh, Ed has already shown. So it's literally by the name ARIA Digital Twin. It's captured through a ARIA sensor suite with ARIA sensor simulation. It's a digital twin. That means you have a physical existence of that space but you also have a digital replica, one-to-one -one replica of that space, right? <laughs> Just looking at the number, uh, what we provide in this data set, there are two spaces. One is the very quote-unquote famous surreal uh, apartment that you have probably seen many times in previous data sets. Uh, there is a data set called Replica a couple of years ago, which has this uh, space capture in there. There are also uh, fair papers on embodied AI that use this space for some of their experiments as well. Uh, we also have a pretty empty uh, office space. There are a few hundred sequences, uh, and there are uh, hundreds of objects, including stationary static objects as well as dynamic uh, objects. You have single person uh, activity who manipulate things, do they, their da daily uh, activities in those spaces, as well as multi-person uh, interaction. So you have a third person observing, uh, a, a third person view to observe someone doing a certain tasks in those spaces. All right, now, let's now come to the more important uh, question. So looking at the number, right, it's two spaces, a few hundred sequences, a few hundred objects, not very, uh, not very impressive. Why did we build this in, in, in the first place? Right? If you look at the overall landscape of all the 3D perception, scene understanding, object recognition type of data set, there are plenty. We're not the first one to try to build a, a digital twin data set. Um, and there are Objectron, tons of objects, 3D oriented bounding boxes, and there are all the uh, scene related data sets. And, and there are workshops running in CVPR that talks about those challenges and data set. But what is the missing piece? Right? Then we need to really zoom out to look at what the data sets in, in 3D machine perception is used for. It's used for training and evaluation. When it comes to training, of course, the quality, uh, the quantity of the data set does matter. And there are a lot of techniques around how do you get away with uh, you know, lower quality, lower uh, resolution, lower, lower accuracy, less complete data set at, at a very large scale. But for evaluation, what we really think hard about is the, the quality matters. If you don't measure your algorithm or your uh, system very carefully to the level of the application requirement, right? you can't really make a meaningful uh, improvement. So this data set really focused on the evaluation side. So, so here is the claim. Uh, so our digital tool twin is the most complete and high quality data set for uh, egocentric machine perception task. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, so comprehensive and complete can mean many things, but specifically under this context, complete means in these two spaces that we have, we have complete ground truths of everything, including the environment, the objects, the state of everything, and human even as well. Comprehensive also means we derive all type of ground truths that is meaningful for this egocentric machine perception uh, tasks. So first of all, let's do some kind of a virtual uh, visual touring, touring test. So one of those is modeled uh, and rendered through our simulation engine. The other is a real uh, capture from the camera. Uh, which one is real? Which one is uh, synthetic? Yes. You can tell the left is real because probably because of the sensor noise that is more realistic, right? But imagine if I just hide the left image, which I didn't have a slide on that. If I hide the left image and you only look at the right image, would you think that's a real photo captured from, from actual lens, right? Okay, next one. This is from a slam camera, the monochrome camera. Okay, which one is real and which one is synthetic? Yeah, probably from the sensor noise as well, right? So it seems that we didn't do a very good job to add enough sensor noise to, to, to fool you. But again, you can see the left. If you, if you only look at the left image, you will think probably that is a real uh, capture, right? Okay, now let's do an even harder one. So this object model, this is in our data set. It's the famous birdhouse that we worked on a lot. Which one is the, the, the real uh, capture from a, from a camera and which one is the synthetic version? So the right one is real or? 
Yeah, left is real. I think I think that the little thing is here, right? The, there are there are more noise on the flowers, and it's too perfect on on, on the right. So to talk about the quality, we so these are the let, let's just zoom in and then look at all the ground truths that we're providing through the uh, this data set. So this is. On the uh, leftmost column, so this is the, all the uh, raw sensor streams. So we're only showing the cameras, but we also have IMU simulators as well. And we have the simulation with all the state of objects uh, and, and scene rendered, right? And, and we have 3D oriented bonding boxes, 2D bo uh, oriented bonding boxes, uh, 2D axis al aligned bonding boxes, uh, 2D segmentation, and depth map. But just look at the 3D bonding boxes and 2D bonding boxes. They're not just like loosely placed the bounding boxes. They're super tight because we have the 3D models, right? These are the minimum bounding box that actually includes the ob object, both for 3D, 2D uh, as well. And segmentation mask is also, it co doesn't come from an image segmentation like edge-based, uh, for example, a segment and everything, right? This is from the 3D model itself. And the depth map, you see there is no artifact. There is no strange artifact from the st uh, structure light sensor or time of flight. Everything is pixel perfect. So because we have this type of very accurate simulation, digital twin, we can even provide this level of uh, ground truth. When you have the table actually occluding the, the, the chair, you get that level of segmentation. And same thing, uh, when we're working with the uh, fisheye lens towards the edge, there is this vignette, right? We can, map, we, we can exactly give you where the, the, the signal is not good enough and give you a cutoff on that. So this is the quality of the, the, the attention, the level of attention to detail in this data set. And you might ask, well, how can I trust that your model alignment for everything is, is perfect? We do, again, it seems that we talked about that we care about calibration. Yes, we do. <laughs> Our team cares about calibration a lot. This is the end-to-end -end arrow calibration. So um, you see that's a very thin uh, stick and you have OptiTrack markers on it, right? To be able to measure how accurate we are in the end-to-end -end, uh, system, which includes many arrow components, right? You have the, uh, headset tracking arrow, you have the object tracking arrow from the OptiTrack, you have the uh, uh, time misalignment between the OptiTrack system as well as the area timing system, and they all compound into a single uh, arrow in the end, which is the reprojection arrow. So we, what we do this is we manually find, uh, annotate the center of every single dot, okay? And then we have the OptiTrack system track individual dots. We project those dots onto the manual annotation, okay? On top of that, we also solve for a six dot post out of the manual annotation, and then reproject the solve the uh, point position in 3D into those cameras. So you have basically three estimated 2D point location. And if your calibration is really good, they should overlap with each other on the same spot, right? This is what we basically achieved in, in this level of uh, accuracy. You can see most of the dots are you know, overlapping with each other with a few pixel offset uh, that we just cannot handle uh, with this such a big complex system. And how accurate we are, so we have a big table of all the objects accuracy measured in the way that, that it's just, I, I just described. Right? Picture reprojection arrow on average uh, on the camera we have the measured uh, reprojection arrow in, in pixel uh, versus the uh, optimized reprojection arrow. The, the optimized reprojection arrow is after you annotate the, the point and then you reproject the point to there is about less than one pixel arrow, right? So for every, every objects, we have this metric. But we also have more than objects. So for people who are collecting data, doing operation in the space, they're wearing a uh, OptiTrack suit as well as their uh, hand has a wrist band that measures where their wrists are. So this is what you get when the, oops. Is the video? Yes. So this is similar to the machine perception services example that you just saw from uh, Jacob's presentation as well as from uh, Vijay's presentation. The only difference is the complete state of the environment is also exposed as ground truth such that you can conduct you know, contextualized AI research that Richard hinted in from the beginning, because this is kind of a bypass everything, and you already have the ground truth for everything. You keep all the state up to date. This could also enable certain well, near-term use cases, for example, like human segmentation inside of this uh, uh, segmentation mask provided from ground truth, uh, as well as if you want to just use 2D contextualized information is what people are looking at, such that uh, you're segmenting that region or, or inferring the user intent just by the 2D projection of the gaze. 
uh, why did we build it? So but I think the, the explanation of the data set is, itself is already giving a lot of motivation behind why we build it. So uh, this will enhance a lot of existing research, which includes 3D object detection and tracking, scene reconstruction, uh, and biosynthesis like nerve related uh, stuff. It's just lift the uh, benchmarking that you can do with those uh, type of research to the next level. It will also in, uh, empower a lot of research that was not possible or not possible in a very accurate way in the past. For example, uh, simulation and uh, uh, real image uh, domain gap analysis. A lot of research are pushing you to use simulation for training, but you actually don't know how much really the difference between your simulation domain and your real domain. This gives you exactly that tool to do some analysis. Same thing with contextualized AI. So complete uh, state maintain the spaces, and you can conduct this type of research on top of that. How do we build it? Uh, on a high level, it's a very expensive and engineering-oriented process, very tedious, and then we have to make sure everything goes right. So the whole tracking system is relied on two components. One is the OptiTrack system, the other is the uh, ARIA glasses itself tracking uh, and the localization. As Jacob described, we have a very good uh, SLAM system that tracks itself with very low drift, right? So we need to merge the two space uh, frame of reference into the same one with very accurate calibration. The, the body tracking is achieved through this bodysuit, and uh, uh, all the object models and spaces are captured through an industrial grade uh, uh, LiDAR and, and uh, laser scanner. And all the materials and light conditions are calibrated manually by tech artists. So this is effectively recreating a 3D movie using like Hollywood grade uh, quality production. Right? Uh, it's a very heavy, heavy lifting uh, process and everything has to go really together. We feel it's important for us to bring this to the, to the community because think about it, I mean, no university is going to create this type of space and just to conduct, one, uh, space, uh, conduct some research, right? But if we do this and provide this to the community, a lot of university and research institute would be able to do this. All right, what is next? Uh, I think this is really a bad joke because uh, Prince just used this. Uh, but in here, with greater data set, it comes with greater challenges, right? So with this data set, we're hosting two challenges as uh, I just introduced. So 3D object detection and tracking with scene generalization. So for this set of challenges, all the obje objects, uh, you have already seen it in the ADT data set, but it's in a completely new environment uh, that you have not seen it. The second set is a, a few shots 3D object detection and tracking challenges. So none of the objects are within the ADT uh, data set. You will see it in, uh, for the first time in a new data set, right? But we'll give, give you a few frames, uh, a few seconds of, of data that captures the poses and appearance of those objects. And you should be able to, well, we, we want you to be able to track them. Uh, it's $10,000 uh, for the first place. And the, the challenge data set is open now. So these are the set of data set that only have the raw data. It doesn't have any annotation, right? You run it through your own algorithm, you submit the result to our uh, website at a later point, and you will get your uh, measured result. Uh, the deadline will be in November, uh, and uh, we'll invite participants to a talk to our BMEC uh, workshop. So to just give folks a, a sneak peek of the, the, the space, what it is. So we have more than two uh, digital twin spaces. There's a supermarket that we fully modeled. Uh, well, people might say this looks like probably a supermarket, any supermarket in 2020 when COVID is still around, right? It's pretty empty, but we all put more, more stuff in, in it. But it is the new environment that we will put into the uh, uh, challenge that uh, is not in the ADT uh, data set. And please go, uh, go ahead and, and, and check out the data set and download and use it and participate in our challenge. All right, now I'm going to hand over to Chris to talk about the uh, synthetic environment data set.